Dear all, in this session, I'll be discussing about specifications of power electronic switches, power MOSFET, power IGBT, and power BJT. These are the various examples of power electronic switches. So let me ask one question. How do you specify those power electronic switches? So what are the important parameters we need to consider before selecting those switches? Let us have a brief discussion. You know, the following parameters are considered while selecting power electronic switches. Voltage rating, current rating, switching frequency, DI by DT rating, DV by DT rating, switching losses, gate drive requirement, safe operating area, you can call SOA, then operating temperature and thermal resistance. These are the important parameters we need to consider before selecting a power electronic switches for a desired application. You will be getting the entire information from a data sheet. Suppose if you want to use a MOSFET, for example, IRFP250N, that is one of the N-channel MOSFET. While selecting the MOSFET, you please download the data sheet. Then you can go through the following rating. So find out those rating and you need to make sure that it is matching with your requirement. Let us move on to voltage rating. So in case of voltage rating, I need to consider the forward voltage drop. What is the total amount of forward voltage drop? Then what is the total amount of reverse repetitive peak voltage? That point also need to be considered. Okay. Similarly, on state voltage drop is another important parameter. These things are available in the data sheet. You please download the data sheet of corresponding switch. Okay. So from the data sheet, you will be getting a lot more information. That is very important. Okay. If I talk about MOSFET, power MOSFET, RDS on, that means on state voltage drop is very important parameters. So RDS on, this is one of the most important parameter you have to consider. So this is also called on state voltage drop, RDS on. This factor has to be considered. Okay. So this is one of the most important parameter. While selecting a switch, you have to take care about the voltage rating. Okay. So in that voltage rating, these four points has to be followed. So that is regarding voltage rating. Now I would like to move on the next parameter. You need to consider current rating as well. So if I talk about current rating, so you have to consider the average value of current, I average. I average. Okay. Similarly, you need to take care about RMS, root mean square value of current that is available from the data sheet. Similarly, repetitive and non-repetitive peak value of current and off-state leakage current is also matters a lot. So make sure that it is in a prescribed limit within a limit. So that is available from the data sheet that you can take care from the data sheet. So these are the things which are regarding current rating. Okay. Anyway, you should have a habit of reading data sheet before choosing a particular switch. Now I would like to move on to the third important parameter that is called switching frequency. So what do you mean by switching frequency? It is nothing but transition from off state to on state and on state to off state. That means vice versa. So normally switch will be under off condition. So how fast the switch will be moving from off state to on state and vice versa. That is called switching frequency. So this is also related to switching speed. You can mention about switching speed. Okay. Switching speed that is correlated to switching frequency. So usually uh, if you want to select a MOSFET, if the switching frequency is up to 100 kilohertz, you can go for power MOSFET. Okay. Especially you can go for power MOSFET. MOSFET is one of the best option for this application. Okay. For power BJT, this high frequency application that is limited. Okay. I will be comparing uh, those switches later on. So this is regarding switching frequency. If you go for high switching frequency, you can minimize the size of the board, size of the power board. That is the main advantage if you go for high switching frequency. So that is the concept regarding switching frequency. Now I would like to move on to next parameter. These parameters that is available from the data sheet. DI by DT rating. This is one of the most important parameter. 
So let us understand what do we mean by d d i by d t rating, rate of change of current with respect to time. Suppose if the current rises rapidly, uh, then current flow will be concentrated in a certain area of the particular device. Therefore, device may be getting spoiled because the rate of change of current with respect to time that will be increasing. It will be concentrating a particular area of a device. Therefore, device will be getting spoiled. Suppose if you are using a MOSFET, power MOSFET, in order to minimize DV, DI by DT rating, so better you connect one series inductor. So you have to use one series inductor. Inductor has to be connected serially. What is the advantage if you connect inductor serially? The rate of change of current, that current growth will be minimized if you connect inductor in serial fashion. So better you can connect one inductor serial to the device such a way that the current growth will be minimized. So to ensure DI by DT protection, uh, the inductor series inductor will be provided. Okay, uh, you can minimize the hotspot, one of the terminology that is called hotspot. Uh, the hotspot means uh, the current rises rapidly and it will be concentrating at a particular area that is called hotspot. Okay, so you can reduce the hotspot by connecting a series inductor. That is another advantage. Okay, so this is regarding DI by DT rating. It should be as minimum as possible. You have to consider a limit, refer the data sheet and identify DI by DT rating of the particular device, which you are going to use for a desired application. Now I would like to move on to fifth point, DV by DT rating. So if you talk about a power semiconductor device, definitely there will be junction capacitance. Okay, there will be a junction capacitance. Junction capacitance. That has to be considered. So if you talk about a power semiconductor device, that means a semiconductor device has internal capacitance that is referred as CJ. Therefore, we can calculate the charging current by using the formula. So the formula is already given here. Uh, I is equal to uh, CJ into dV by dt. Okay, you can refer I or IC. I or IC. Anything is okay. IC is equal to CJ into dV by dt. Uh, from this equation, I can write IC is directly proportional to dV by dt. It is very clear. It is evident that IC is directly proportional to dV by dt. So as the dV by dt rating increases, what is the impact? IC is also getting increased. Okay, that means current flow through the device is getting increased. Finally, the device will be getting damaged if you cannot control dV by dt rating. So it should be in a limited manner. Otherwise, device will be getting damaged. To ensure dV by dt protection, so what you are going to do is you will be using snubber circuit. It is basically an RC network. Okay, it is basically RC network, snubber circuit. So by using the snubber circuit, you can able to make out uh, the dV by dt protection. You can minimize the rate of change of voltage with respect to time. So that's the speciality of dV by dt rating. Okay, so this is regarding dV by dt rating. It should be in a uh, prescribed limit, within a limit. Okay, it should be restricted. If it is more, what is going to happen means the IC is directly proportional to dV by dt. So as the dV by dt rating increases, uh, the IC is also getting increased. So that is one of the severe problem. So please do refer the data sheet and identify the limit. So it depends on the devices. It varies from devices to devices. So that you have to take care. Now I would like to discuss about another factor that is called the switching losses. So what do you mean by switching losses? So let us understand the importance of switching losses. So let us consider the first point. During turn on, the forward current rises before the forward voltage falls. Definitely there will be a current value as well as voltage. Current into voltage means there will be power, power loss. If I talk about opposite hand, if I think about other side, during turn off condition, the forward voltage rises before the current falls, definitely there will be a power loss. If you can observe these two conditions, actually in turn on condition, so current should be infinity actually. Current should goes to infinity, sure. But the voltage, actually ideal condition voltage should be zero but this is actually not taking place. Suppose current is moving towards infinity, but the voltage will not be dropping to zero. At that time, there will be, if I multiply I into V, there will be a power. That power will be considered as power loss. On the opposite end, during turn off condition, the voltage uh, should be uh, tends to infinity for the ideal condition. Current supposed to be zero. Okay, but these are the ideal conditions. I cannot say that uh, this will be followed in the practical conditions. 
So regarding this scenario, current will not be moving to zero. There are certain value of current during off condition. At that time, there will be a power value. I into V means power. So that power will be considered as switching losses. So these conditions will be leading to switching losses. So there are different uh, methodology to minimize switching losses. So that is another important parameter. As the switching losses increases, efficiency of the device comes down. So that point you have to take care into consideration. Okay. So you have to refer the data sheet and identify the switching loss or switching limits of the particular device. Now I would like to discuss one of the most important parameter that is called a gate driver requirement. So gate driver is mandatory required because the PWM signal, uh, which is generated from any of the microcontroller or any analog circuit, that is that is very weak. Okay, you cannot able to drive with that PWM signal. For that purpose, we require a gate driver circuit. We need a gate driver circuit that I will speak during module number two. Okay. Anyway, that PWM signal that is not sufficient to uh, charge the capacitance of the MOSFET or IGBT, whatever it may be. Uh, for that purpose, we require a gate driver. Okay. So regarding the gate driver circuit, that strengthen or that maintain the charging of that particular junction that is required for uh, turning on the device. Otherwise, device will not turn on. So that is why gate driver is important for all the type of power switches. Clear. So gate drive voltage and currents are important parameters to turn on and turn off the devices. So one of the example of MOSFET gate driver, we can go for IER 2110. 2110. So you can get the, get the details from the data sheet. You can directly download. Similarly, other gate driver circuit, you can go, go for IER uh, 2111. Okay, IER 2111. This is also another important uh, gate driver for MOSFET IC. Similarly, if you want to drive any other type of uh, switches, you can go for optocoupler IC, TLP250N. These are the popular gate driver IC. So many gate driver ICs are available. You will be getting the information from the data sheet. Okay. So depends on the scenario or depends on the requirement, you need to choose the gate driver. So this is very clear. But cost of the gate driver is too much high, maybe uh, greater than the cost of the device. So while selecting, you should be very much careful. Okay, cost also has to be taken into consideration. So this is regarding gate drive requirement. Now I would like to discuss about safe operating area. Uh, abbreviation is SOA. That means uh, we have to consider the parameters like current, voltage, then RDS on, then PD. Everything has to be taken into consideration. That means the safe operating area is the voltage and current conditions over which Power switches operate without any permanent damage or degradation. That is called SOA. For example, you can see these different parameters like RDS on, then ID, PD, then VGS constant. You can see the boundary also. This parameter should not exit in that particular boundary. It should be restricted in that particular boundary. Else, uh, the device will be getting spoiled. So, better if you want to enhance the life of the devices, those parameters should be restricted in that particular border. Otherwise, device will be getting damaged. Okay, that point also has to be considered. That is called a safe operating area. I think it is very clear to you. So this is also available uh, from the data sheet. You should have a habit of reading data sheet, especially if you want to do a power electronics project. While selecting the device, you should be very much careful and you have to go through the data sheet thoroughly. Now, in order to select the fuses, okay, for the device, I require uh, I square RT, the parameter that is I square RT to select the fuse of the entire system. We need I square, I square T, I square T value has to be considered where I is the current and T is the operating time. Okay. So this is the main parameter which will be used for selection of the fuse. So that is also one of the important parameter that is also available from the data sheet. Temperature is also one of the most important parameter. Normally, uh, we have to maintain the device in between minus 50 degrees Celsius to uh, 175 degrees Celsius. Okay, minus 50 to plus 175 degrees Celsius. So every device is the temperature, operating temperature is also matters a lot. So you have to identify what is the operating temperature of a particular device which you are going to use for the desired application. Okay, so the operating temperature is also as a crucial role. Now I would like to discuss about the thermal resistance. Why thermal resistance has to be considered? Because 
heat sink is very very important for all the type of power switches why because definite amount of temperature or definite amount of heat that will be generating inside the device to dissipate the heat to, towards surroundings we require a heat sink so we have to select a suitable heat sink otherwise your device will be getting damaged you can see a different type of heat sink see here also you can observe okay these are the different varieties of heat sinks i have collected from uh, e-commerce website okay these are available plenty available so it depends on the devices you have to use the heat sink which will be perfect such a way that uh, the whatever the temperature which is generated whatever the heat and which is generated in the, inside the device that will be dissipated that means loss of uh, energy conservation rule energy conservation rule okay so heat sink selection is also one of the crucial factor uh, it support for the life of the device okay so thermal resistance has to be considered so i have referred the textbook of power electronics written by mohammed h rashid finally thank you very much for watching this video if you are having any questions you can put up in the comment box i will revert back Thank you.